Amesy here of Amesy's Antics. Welcome to my channel. I hope you are well today because I have another sewing project to share with you today and that is in the form of how to make your own pyjamas using the Tilly and Buttons Make It Simple book. It's featuring again I love Tilly and Buttons patterns because they are so easy to follow and perfect for beginners. And the pyjamas of choice are these Juno pyjamas which are included in this book. This is a third book from Tilly and the Buttons. So I am making these pyjamas and altering them slightly as well as using the tab of the t-shirt also in this book to make the top. So if you would like to see how to make your own pyjamas using this book then let's get crafting. So here is the fabric that I'm going to use to make these pyjamas. So for the bottoms and the shorts, I'm using this lovely peachy orange cactus print jersey, four-way type stretch material from Palm Fabrics. And I can link it down below. However, it was out of stock the last time I checked, but it may come back in stock, hopefully, and it is just fabulous. To complement this, I'm using a pistachio -y green type colour which again is a jersey t-shirt material and has good stretch both directions and this is from Flamingo Fabrics and obviously as you can see complements those cactus prints really well and finally I have some green ribbon although it looks a bit more turquoise on the camera and um, this was from Amazon and I wouldn't recommend it is very scratchy cheap feeling and I don't actually end up using it in the end but I thought I would still include it here so let's get on with the sewing with all of my sewing patterns from the Tilly and Buttons, I always trace these out onto separate sewing tracing paper. And I am actually making the Juno pyjamas in the size four in the book and just pinning this to that material as directed and cutting it out. And to create the shorts, I just retraced out the leg pattern for the pyjamas apart from stopping this short. So measuring nine centimeters down from the inside leg to where I wanted the hem to be. And this is just following the instructions that was in the book. So measuring it down the inside leg and then drawing a straight line to where this meets and cutting it down to this size, if that makes sense. It's all in the book of how this is done. So as you can see, this is the ribbon that I have chosen to do with the pyjamas and I bought this on Amazon and it's come in just one little strip. Now the actual pattern piece is just a bit shorter than the actual width However, you need to place this on the fold. So if I wanted to place it on the fold here, you can see it's not wide enough. And if I wanted to place it on the fold this way, which is probably the better way because that goes stretchy that way, you can see it is not actually long enough. So what I am going to try and do, I'm just going to fold it this way and shorten the cuff so I won't have as big enough, a big, so I won't have as big a cuff on the legs <clears throat> and we'll see how it turns out. Um, deviating from the pattern slightly but I was going to transfer the marking to where it needs to be. Um, let's see how it goes. And before starting to sew the pyjama bottoms, I am just adding in the notches along the pattern line where everything should have a notch. And this just makes it all easier to assemble once sewing it together. Then it was time to pin the two leg sections together. So you should have two pieces for each leg and these should be right sides to right sides and pinning them along the inside leg and the side seam because we are then gonna sew up the leg on either side but missing the crotch area and just repeating the same for the short pattern that I've cut out as well. 
Then it was time to sew up the two seams that have just been pinned, making sure to back stitch at the start and end of each stitch. And because this is a jersey fabric, I am using a zigzag stitch, but if your machine is fancy, then you may have a stretch stitch, but mine isn't, so a zigzag stitch is the way to go, making sure that it is about a size two, I think, on my machine um, to hold it all together appropriately without it sort of falling apart when wearing. Once the two leg pieces are sewn, it is then time to sew them together to actually form the pants. So to do this is very similar to, well it's the same as what I use when making the Stella joggers by Tilly and the Buttons as well, so I can link that above. But all you do is turn one leg right side out, leaving the other one inside out, and then slip the right side out leg into the inside out leg so that all right sides of the fabric are matching and then you want to line up the two inner leg seams as well as any notches that are on the top part because we're going to sew across where the crotch area is to secure them all together. The pyjama bottoms will look like this once everything is pinned together in place and ready for sewing so we're going to sew all away along them lines there. So again back stitching at the start and end of each seam and also maybe doing a double stitch seam around the inner crotch area just to give it a bit of added strength around that part of the pyjama bottoms. I then repeated the same process with the shorts because sewing in bulk is a little bit more easier so doing the same bits for each part makes the sewing process a little bit quicker and simpler I think anyway so yes that's what I am doing here before moving on to the waistband part of the project it was just time to give all of the sewn seams a quick press with the iron to help them set and lay flat making it easier to sew everything together for the waistband it was time to measure my waist apart from you actually measure a bit lower than your natural waist and um, because this is where the pajamas are going to sit and then you have to actually do some maths and take 10% of the measurement off for stretch and then add 15 millimeter for your seam allowance so cut it to size and then you want to sew the two open ends together and then find the middle part of the waistband so folding this in half where you have just joined it and placing a pin then you want to fold it in half again once you have marked the two center parts of either side and then place two pins where you have then folded it into quarters and this should give you four places of where you want to place the waistband on to the pajamas and it's a little bit confusing but you want to find the two halves and then the two quarter measurements and use pins to mark these out and where you have a pin you want to either line the two center middle pieces to the back and front seams of the pajama bottoms and then the two quarter marks you actually line up with the two side seams and this just makes sure that the elastic is going to fit in place where you want them to fit. We are also placing the elastic on the inside of the pyjama bottoms for this part and then using a zigzag stitch and stitching all the way around to secure the elastic in place. Now don't worry because this isn't going to be seen, you're then going to fold the waistband over itself again to hide some of that raw edge of the elastic encasing it in the pyjama bottoms. I'm hoping this makes sense. And then it's time to fold the waistband over so that the elastic is on the inside and I've also added my own personal label as well and once it's folded over you want the elastic to be right at the top of that fold and then sew it in place following that original stitching that was completed to attach the waistband part and the elastic together going all the way around until you reach the end and you can back stitch at the start and end of this seam as well. I repeated the exact same process for the short waistband as well. Right, so here is the cuff. Now what it tells you to do in the book and on the pattern is fold it 
lengthways and match them to notches which would create this then you sew along there connecting that together and then you would bring this right side out however I can't really demonstrate because it, it hasn't done it properly but um, this would make the cuff super small and I wouldn't actually be able to get the foot through or attach it properly to the pyjama bottoms so what I am going to do instead is ignore ignore them fold these right sides together so this edge is meeting and then sew the seam across there and I've practiced on this cuff so as you can see the seam is a cross there and then what you need to do is obviously press that little seam out cut trim it down if it needs it um, fold it half on itself again and press it but um, and then that's your cuff that bit attaches to the pajama but as you can see it's got a lot more stretch and it's going to be a bit more comfortable on the ankle than the other version so I'm going to have a go at attaching these cuffs and then the pajama bottoms will be complete so here I am just showing you the process of me making that second cuff but I actually don't end up using these cuffs on the pyjamas and you'll see in a little minute my decision with that but I just thought I would still add in the process of making them and sewing them and pressing them together ready to be attached because you maybe want cuffs on your pyjamas if you are following this pattern as well. So I've just pinned the cuff and I actually think even though it's a really nice contrast, it's a really nice contrast with the cactus, I actually prefer the pyjamas just like ankle brazier. So I think I'm just going to do a little hem around the ankles and call the pyjamas that. So I don't know if you can see. They fit really nice, but yeah, I just, I really like the contrast, but I prefer the feel of the ankle grazer part. So I'm just going to hem it indecisiveness as always <laughs> so i'm finishing off the pajamas with a hem and the short version as well just doing a hem and i think this is about a one to two centimeter hem and just zig folding it up and then zigzagging it and then pressing it into place to set it all in before moving on to the top for these pajamas for the pyjama top, I am actually doing the short sleeved version, which is the Tabitha t-shirt in the book as well, rather than the longer sleeved version with the pyjamas. So to cut this out, you've got to do it slightly differently. You've got to cut on two different folds for the front and back bodice, and then use it again to cut out the other little pieces. So the book does explain it better than what I can, but here's all the pieces cut out, and I am using a size three in the Tabitha, just so it's a bit more of a snugger fit. Ideally, I'd like best to wear for bed, but the t-shirt is really comfortable, so I will be using this. Then what you want to do is measure the shoulder part of the Tabitha t-shirt to decipher how long you need to cut some knit interfacing. Now, this is iron-on interfacing and just helps stabilise the shoulder parts of the t-shirt to make it a bit more stronger when wearing, and you place this onto the back bodice piece. And then pinning the front bodice to the back bodice at the shoulder seams because that is where it is going to be sewn. So I am just back stitching the start and end of this stitch and sewing it along that knit interfacing to help keep that shoulder nice and stable. And this is what it would look like once it is connected together. Then it is time to create the neck band piece. Now this bit I thought was going to be really fiddly but it actually went in really well. So what you want to do is connect the two raw edges of the neck band piece that was being cut out to it create a, a loop and then flatten the seam down so open the seam and press it then fold this in half so that the two raw edges are meeting wrong sides together so the both sides are the nice right sides and pressing this in place so that it all stays nice and flat and is sort of the neck band piece to connect the neck 
band piece to the t-shirt, we need to lay this out as flat as possible. So making sure that the two halves of the t-shirt are laid out flat and then fold in to where the side seams are of the shoulder seams to find the middle point of the back bodice. And then you want to find the middle point of the front bodice. So place a pin where this fold is and repeat for the front bodice piece. And then it's time to repeat the same process with the neckband piece so finding the middle of the back of this so from where the seam has been created the middle from there and then this bit will actually match with that front point that was marked with the seam part that has been sewn with the back bodice part and you want this to be pinned to the outside of that t-shirt lining like this and then follow with more pins so it's all secure in place it is very fiddly and it does move about so you, it is a bit more complex and then use a zigzag stitch to connect along that edge making sure that the neckband and the t-shirt parts are actually connecting when sewing this and hopefully your neckband shall go in nice and flat like this. If it hasn't gone in quite flat enough, give it a good quick press because pressing does wonders for sewing projects and makes them extra polished and makes things sit a lot flatter and flush like this. I have also done a top stitching just around the edge to give it a bit more of a professional look. Next, it is time to add in the sleeves. Now, these are marks, you should have notches, and this is called raglan style, I believe, because we are putting the sleeves in flat, and it is such an easy way to attach sleeves. It's not complex at all, so you match the notches, and it is a bit curved, so I guess that's the complex bit, so you do have to sew it a little bit curved, but once it is pinned together, you just want to sew along that edge, and your sleeves should be attached, and the t-shirt taking shape. All that is left to do then is sew or pin the side seams together, including the bottom of these sleeves, and sew a seam along either side to fix it all together, using a zigzag stitch and back stitching the start and end as usual. I've also added in a label, of course. Then the final thing to do is do a three centimeter hem along the bottom, which is just folded up with a zigzag stitch to secure it in place. I actually finished off the pajama top with a vinyl decal and I will show you how to make this in a separate video, but then the pajamas are ready to wear. how to make your own pyjamas using the Juno's pyjamas from the Tilly and Buttons Make It Simple book. This is a fabulous book to have if you are a newbie sewer or even an experienced sewer. I've been sewing for years but I am no means an expert. I still class myself as a newbie. I went head in first to complex projects and didn't learn all of the basics so these books are perfect for teaching you the basics and getting something wearable as your project there's nothing worse than completing the same project and the item being horrendous not wearable everything is wearable if you follow the Tilly and Buttons patterns and it's not sponsored at all it is just my advice for any newbie sewers out there invest in some of the Tilly and Buttons stuff because I think they're fabulous and these pajamas have turned out fabulous i mean look at this fabric isn't this just amazing who doesn't love a cactus and these pajamas are perfect for that transitional time between spring and summer where it's getting a little bit warmer you don't need as thick sleepwear and then obviously the shorts version are just perfect for summer and if we get to travel this year they will be going in my suitcase with me to be stylish on a holiday in bed as well. So let me know what you think of this project in the comments below and whether you'll be giving these a go. And if you do, I would love to see your creations. I would love to see what you come up with with your pajamas. 
And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, as well as hitting that subscribe button to keep up with all of my crafting antics and hitting the notification bell as well, because that will alert you each time the videos go live. You can't see it here, but behind this camera, I have a massive pile of new fabric of all my different creations that I need to make. Some I have ideas of what I'm gonna do with, others not, so subscribe to be part of this sewing process and some more sewing projects to come. As well as checking out my blog, Ames's Antics, which is linked below and up above now for you to check out because that has a little bit more information over on the blog for you to check out. And with that said, I will see you in next week's video and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and week. Whatever you are doing, hopefully it is filled with something creative, crafty and inspiring. And I will see you next time. Bye!